Uh, as I walk up this way, he keeps pulling ahead, yeah. and I'm just trying to teach him to follow my energy rather than pull off. Um, so he started to do that now, and he's starting to change direction on his own. So just, like I said, something fundamental like this is the building blocks of our relationship of, look, you don't get to walk ahead of me on a square block like this, so when I need him to stop at the fence line, he's gonna, I've got that communication sorted. They say it takes about 300 to 500 repetitions for a dog to actually fully understand what you're asking from it. <laughs> so that's where the, the consistency comes in. Can you see that like little prancy, perky energy he does? I like that energy, that's good energy. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> the trot. Come on, Trotter. Let's go. And you're going to find, like, if you did this at the fence line, he'd do the same thing. He'd probably freeze up. He'd stop halfway from the fence line. He wouldn't want to leave. And you just keep working him through it. He's a lovely boy, though. He's got a nice nature. Beautiful nature. That's why we want to I have a feeling it might be noise that's triggering him yeah. in general with kids as well because yeah. if you think about kids what do they do they make high-pitched noises they flap their arms around they move a little bit spastic sometimes um, and everything I've noticed with him has always been noise related when the dog whines when a car drives past it's, it's always noise um, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's something like that Oi. I'm kind of, uh, what I'm trying to do is find the root of it. It's like, I'm kind of pushing him until the point where he goes like, I'm sick of you. Um, and that, uh, I tend to find if we can find the, the, the deep seated issue of like, hey, look, I'm really sick of doing this now. I don't want to do it anymore. Is when the switch happens. Look, we're just going to walk back and forth for 50 minutes and you're eventually going to get sick of it. And then we know, hey, look, yeah, you, you, you're, you actually don't have it in you, if you know what I mean. Come on. Come on. Small dogs are the worst. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they've been the most aggressive dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they do. They'll do this for like an hour, like two hours sometimes. Come on. So whenever he hears a noise, though, when he goes up there, he can hear or smell the dogs or something, and that's where he's stopping. Yeah, he can hear the whining. Can he? One, one sounds like a humming. Yeah. Is it? Come on, come on. Can you see where he starts to cut me off? There, as I walk through, so as I'm going towards that kind of closed in area, he wants to cut me off. It's kind of like that's a pressure point to the dog. Yeah. So like he knows that if it, like he's, he's uncertain about what's in there, the noise, he, that's where they're gonna come from. So it's the same with the front door or the, the fence line. You're gonna find as you do something like this, if you walk him around on a lead, he's gonna to wanna to cut you off towards that front gate. Yeah. Never let him cut you off and that'll just, it's not necessarily gonna get rid of it, but it's gonna mean that when you go towards the front gate, he's gonna back off. Yeah if that makes sense. So uh, every time he goes near that gate, you push him out of your space and you calm him down. Say he barks at the front door and you're like, hey, I'm okay with that. But then you go to the front door, he instantly goes, kind of thing. It's just gonna help reiterate that. Come on. All right, we're gonna head on up around there now to the dogs. And I just wanna see the same response because he's probably gonna do a similar thing when he sees the dogs. Um, and then I'll get you on the end of the lead and just do a bit of coaching with you and to show you a few, to see what you're doing and see if I can give you any tips in, in any way. Um, and then we'll go from there, eh? Cool, sound all right? Come on. We're just gonna go around to this gate here. 
So generally just at, at the front door, what I'll usually do is just, like if I open the gate, and if he tries to bolt through, I'll just push him back a little bit with my spatial guidance. Yeah. So you just move into him a little bit. And that, that'll create space from the doorway. Yeah. Just help him, his brain de-escalate a little bit. Yeah. Really good one for the, the females in the house to do as well. Do you think less talking and more body motion? Um, talking's fine. Yeah. Um, it just needs to be very clear. Yeah. At the moment, I haven't used any verbal because he doesn't understand he's still learning to understand what a lead is with me and what my motion means and then I'll, I'll probably soon start to bring words in yeah. um, but just keep it very simple like um, no or wh whatever word you in or hall so like here it might be back 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 up from the door or something and then he backs off and then um, he tries to come forward again let's say back I just keep backing him off Good, give him a bit of praise for making eye contact. Yeah. Let's go now, we can go through the door or something along those lines. So see how he's cutting me off again? I'll just be aware of that if he keeps doing it once or twice, hey, it's okay. Now he's starting to do it frequently, I might just give him a shift to say, like, D -d 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 piss off kind of thing, don't stop it. You can see again, he's seen the distraction, that's when he's gonna wanna cut in front of me. Remember how I talked about space in the house? This is why that's so important, is because if he doesn't understand what your space means in the house, and then I try push him here, he's gonna go, what the hell are you doing? Like, yeah, yeah. You, you, I sit on you in the house. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mother and father growing up with kids, a whole big Māori family. Yeah. Um, they, that's what they uh, like. Uh, sorry, to sorry to interrupt. Did you see how he just peed and then that dog just instantly triggered? Yeah. So he's just like a cockfight. Like, yeah. That's oh, my scent. Yeah. <laughs> Triggers the dogs. Yes. Yeah. That's why that's scenting down the street. Yes. And it will trigger all the dogs down the street. Yeah. Let's go. So that would be the first, the that might be the first kind of command I start to teach him is like let's go, which just means like we're moving. So I've been teaching him the motion of what I want him to do this whole time. Now I'm starting to name it. But I find if you name something too early, uh, and then say you say I say let's go and then I let him get away with it the consistency is broken so the command loses value. So uh, that's why I, I, I don't bring commands in until a little bit later into the session. Good boy, he made the decision on his own, that's good. He's gone to dad, I'm just gonna give him a tug. Come on, good boy. A little bit of encouragement there. Let's go. Let's go. Good boy. And I just praise when he starts to kind of engage with me. So there he was kind of like avoiding, avoiding. Then there's actually when he decided to come towards me. That's when I praise. Let's go. So you can see there he's at a decision making moment. So I didn't tug him there. The way I could tell is his body posture was not so rigid. Like he was kind of like looking around like thinking. Uh, should I move? Should I not? Has this guy been consistent with me? And then he made the right decision, which is awesome. And then now I've just brought him back into me. Good boy. So it's all about when I give command, you re-engage with the handler. Come on. Let's go. Ears have gone back. He's kind of checking in. He's made the decision not to move. So now he's going to get a tug on the lead. Come on, come on, that's a boy. Can you see his movement slowed down just a little bit as well? He's getting, he's getting t one tired but mentally drained because I'm making him constantly work. Let's go. Good boy, good boy, come on. Good boy, that's better. Good boy. Good boy. Thought about cutting me off, but then backed away from my space. That's good. Half a decision. <laughs> Let's go. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That's better. Good boy.
cool. What we'll do is we'll get you on the end of the lead now, and I'll just get you doing some practice because um, this is something that you're gonna you can just utilize anywhere where you feel like you need more control of the dog. Do what you're doing. Yep. Uh, I just say let's go. Let's go. That's it. There you go. That your right hand of all that lead, if you just let that go and drag, yeah, it'll just stop you from feeling like you need to bunch it up all the time. Nice. There you go. And we'll walk back down towards that gate now as well. So you're going to find as we go towards that gate, he's going to want to drag, kind of pull towards it a little bit. So just if you, if you feel like you're losing control or he's more focused on the gateway, just change direction a couple of times just to re, re, refocus him. Okay. Cool. And then just practice your stopping at the gate as well, just as you go through. That's it. And if you cut him off, yeah, that's it. Nice. Nice. That's it. Eye contact, perfect. Nice. Nice, that eye contact's good. That's it. Nice, perfect. If you give him a gentle tug before you get up to the, like, see there how we kind of took that step from there to there? Yeah. If you tug him on the lead, you can also utilize that to stop him from pulling forward into the gateway. Yes. Shorten that lead just a little bit. Yeah, that's it. So I'll just give you a demo. So as you come up here, come on. So you're, you're coming towards it. You've got your option to cut him off. If you cut him off earlier, it's going to be better. So if you leave it too late, he's going to kind of keep pulling forward. Option one. Option two would be to use the lead. Okay. So I'll show you the lead as well. I'll do a few reps just to kind of visualize it, help you visualize it. So as I'm come up, I could use the lead, give a couple of tugs, slow him down. If he was still kind of pulling ahead, I could also cut him off. So you've just got your yeah, either option yep. and just use whatever works at the time. Yep. Pop him, yeah, just slightly earlier. Yep. So you popped him about there. I want you to pop him, yeah, just a step earlier, like a prelude, like a reminder, like, hey, I'm about to stop, yep. then kind of stop, okay. and then another little one as you stop. Okay. Yeah. yeah, good. You can see how he's focused on you there. Yeah. That's it. And if even if so, he's kind of hitting the same point. What you can also do, rather than moving completely, so you're here in this position, you can just move and just give him a little push there. That'll push him in behind you again as well. So, what he's having a habit of doing is always snuggling into your leg a little bit yes. and that's just that little bit of we're going a little bit further with the spatial awareness we're kind of we're about 70% there net we're going at 100% okay. but if he understands that like I said he's going to respect everybody a lot a lot more so um the the, the reason with this, the reason I'm emphasizing so much about the space here with the doorway is because what he's doing is he's what I call blanketing. Yes. So they hug in a little bit. Yes. Um, and we're just overemphasizing it a little bit to help him break that feeling like he needs to guard the doorway so much. Yes. So um, he's still going to always do it, but it just means, like I said, if someone goes to the door and you go, hey, he's going to de escalate a lot quicker. Fully. So it, what we've done is we've kind of like drained him. Mm. So I've kind of like worked him and kind of made him do things. So he's kind of like, he's just kind of at the point where he's thinking about giving up. Yeah. And now we're working on the things where he struggles because yes. he's, he's tired. Yeah. So what you're seeing here is him starting to go back to doing the behavior that he's used to doing. Yes. And we're just reiterating, like, we've just taught you, you don't do that. Yes. 
this is a trigger point for you, we need to work on that. Mm -hmm. So the reason we're emphasizing a lot here, so here he wants to keep doing this, oh, I want to stay through the gateway or I want to claim, that, you know, make decisions at the doorway again, and I'm just working him through it slowly, is so that, um, like you said, when that situation happens where he wants to dive ahead of the girls or whoever it may be, if we work this a lot, if they say even if he does and they go, hey, just, he's just going to go, oh yeah, that's right, I've had my training, I know what I'm meant to do at the gateway, if that makes sense. Over time, you'll find like what he'll start to do is he'll just come and sit behind you yes. and like, every time you stop, he'll just sit behind you, yes. which is him starting to get it, like, yes. okay, like, I get what he's asking from me now. So he may close the distance, but he's going to be respectful with it versus yes. coming in and like leaning and facing out. Yes. That's slightly different. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. We'll give him a bit of a break, he's a bit hot. Oh.